Hello. Hello folks and welcome back to a brand new game, Homeworld Deserts of Karak. I've been waiting for this for basically since we heard about it. This was originally called uh, Hardware Shipbreakers. It was made by Blackbird Interactive down here in the corner here, uh, which was formed by a number of people from the old Relic, the people who originally made Homeworld. Um, a number of the people from that old team went off and they formed Blackbird Interactive. And apparently they originally tried to acquire the Homeworld franchise, the rights, the IP, so on and so forth, uh, when it went up for auction when Relic went under. Unfortunately, they didn't succeed in getting it. Uh, Gearbox did instead. Uh, I don't know if it's because Blackbird Interactive just didn't have the money, just in general, or if they were outbid, or what precisely occurred there. All I know is they didn't get it, and Gearbox got it. So, they were making what was essentially a spiritual successor, uh, slash spiritual prequel, really, to the Homeworld games. It was going pretty well, and then Gearbox decided, you know what? We like this idea, it looks cool. We'll let you use the Homeworld uh, name. So originally, it was called Homeworld Shipbreakers. Uh, somewhere between Gearbox allowing them to actually start using the, the Homeworld IP again, and the actual release, the name was changed to Deserts of Karak. So here we are. That's the brief history of this game. Uh, it is based on Karak, the Homeworld, the original Homeworld. Well, okay, not the original Homeworld, but the Homeworld you start on at the beginning of the first Homeworld. The desert planet that ends up being destroyed by the Titan. Um, it is a desert world, obviously. And... It is a real-time strategy game, just like the original Homeworld series. However, it's obviously based on the planet as opposed to in space. So some of the stuff is different, for obvious reasons. However, they did try to use a lot of the same interface and a lot of the same mechanics where applicable and where possible, which I think provides for an interesting appearance and some interesting gameplay from what I have seen. Take a quick look at the options menu before we jump into here. This is a pretty good, this is pretty good. Uh, you got pretty good resolution options, although the, apparently the resolution, according to Total Biscuit, I am not going to question the man, I'm just simply going to point out the fact that, according to him, this is not rendering in the actual appropriate resolution. I have, don't really have the inclination to try to test that theory. It, I will assume that he is correct. Um, we do have, as you can see, shadow options, fog, bloom, anti-aliasing, though it doesn't tell you what it is or any sort of selections for it. Extra quality, decal distance, uh, anisotropic filtering, uh, effects details, ellipse, which um, scales the units as you zoom the camera out or zoom it in. Um, and I believe that if this turned off, you get to see the units, how large they actually are in comparison to each other, regardless of how the camera, uh, how far away the camera is. I think if this is on, it keeps them about the same size relative to each other, which really sounds like a st stupid idea, so I believe having it off does it correctly and shows the units their proper, appropriate size in comparison to each other. Not completely sure. We may turn this on, we may turn it off. I don't know, for the moment it's off. Effects quality, uh, effects LOD, uh, basically how far away you can see the effects and how they look at a distance. Uh, then you also have the general LOD, which is for more textures and models and such things. Physics animation, debris, and track lifetimes. Sounds! Master volume. Music and cinema, thank you for letting me turn the music down separately, and the cinematics too! Separately from the main game, I really wish that the music and cinematics were a separate thing, that they were not linked together, but... I'll forgive you, I suppose. Game effects, game speech, 
so on and so forth. I will be monitoring this in the first episode here, uh, once this one comes out, once this is recorded, to see exactly how well this particular setting works. Uh, particularly, we may have to turn the music up or down, uh, particularly for the cinematics and the master volume, of course. We do have subtitles, though, so it does help. Controls! At least list the controls, but unfortunately you can't actually rebind the stuff. So... And a few gameplay settings, nothing really significant here. Uh, basically some interface UI stuff, but not really a whole hell of a lot of it, so... Uh, that's a thing too. Alright, al I've already done the tutorial. It was a really basic tutorial. It was pretty terrible. <laughs> Based on Total Biscuit's review, the AI in this game is fucking terrible. I haven't actually played it yet, so I can't really tell you, but based on what he said, you really want to play it on Classic, because... Yeah. So we're gonna play it on Classic. Let's go. If I get my, you know, if I just get absolutely wrecked, then we'll... maybe have to lower the set. But we'll see. Oh, loading times seem to be relatively long, although that's really a matter of opinion, and, you know, can't really compare it to anything, so take that with a grain of salt. As usual, I will be showing all the cutscenes and everything. So, if you don't want spoilers, Our don't planet fucking watch. Is dying. The desert grows with every passing year. The world is at war. But there is hope. An object has been detected deep within the Great Banded Desert. It has been called the Jiraki Object, the primary anomaly. We believe it may hold the key to our salvation. An expedition to retrieve it is being prepared. Interesting art style, it's like water painting. fucking looking for it. That's pretty cool. That looks pretty nice.
obviously it is for all intents and purposes of mothership. Size of this thing compared to those little vehicles. Look at the size of a person compared to that other vehicle. Look at the size of the big thing compared to that. Bringing systems online. Fleet manager online. Resource control system online. Unit status online. Command system online. Nice. Objective tracking online. All control systems successfully installed and online. Systems confirmed. Rachel, redeploy to your base runner. Copy that. Attention all stations. This is fleet intelligence for the expedition carrier Capisi. I will be issuing all mission objectives through this channel. Before departure, we need to run essential tests on our key capabilities. Vehicle production, resource salvaging, and combat operations. Time is of the essence, so let's run through these quickly. Fleet operations, is your channel clear? Affirmative. I will be providing all non-critical updates on unit production, research, resource salvaging, and all carrier systems through this channel. Copy that. Stand by to initiate production test. Capisi, go ahead. First, deploy a salvager from the command carrier Capisi. Salvager online. Salvager Stand by to commence resource test. Send orders. Order the salvager to gather nearby resources located here. This is, of course, basically uh, also a tutorial. Even though they only gave us one separately from the campaign, they actually gave us, you know, the first mission here is an additional tutorial, or less. Rachel, the Capisi support cruiser has suffered a mechanical failure and requires immediate repairs before departure. Position. Get that unit back online. Move. Use your base runner to repair the support cruiser located here. Initiating repairs. Repairs completed. Good work, Rachel. Stand by for combat test. You field. In order to produce combat vehicles, we will need to invest time and resources in upgrading our tech. The first step is to upgrade the Capisi's advanced manufacturing facilities. Once that is done, we will be able to build light attack vehicles. Capisi reading. Research completed. Light attack vehicle fabrication now online. Produce three light attack vehicles from the Capisi. Light attack vehicle in service. Light attack vehicle online. Light attack vehicles ready. Vehicle. Target drones are now ready for weapons testing. Confirmed. Use the light attack vehicles to target and destroy the drones located here. Keep eyes out for targets. Go, go, go. And these guys do have a little self boost. Punch it. We gotta go. Increases their speed.
This is... They are so... Almost exactly copying the launch of the mothership in the beginning of Homeworld. Outer doors at full aperture and secure. Like it's, you know, hours, Captain. Even just some of the stuff that they're saying is almost exactly the same. Modified slightly for the uh, this is obvious your differences, but today we embark on a historic mission to find and retrieve the Draki object, lying at the heart of the Great Banded Desert, deep inside Galsian territory. It holds the key to our survival on this planet. The journey will be perilous. Not quite. But if successful, we will change the course of history forever and secure our future for generations to come. Yes or no? Personal okay. log, science officer Rachel Sajet, expedition carrier Capisi. We've launched three months ahead of schedule and just in time. The Gaussian threat was far greater than we had anticipated. As the lead scientist on this expedition, I'm more convinced than ever that my brother was right. That what lies out there amongst the dunes holds the key to our survival on this planet, and possibly beyond. We have no choice now but to believe. Expedition carrier PC away. No contact with Galsian forces. Confirm rendezvous order with lander 607 at the boneyard for receipt of sensors module. <laughs> oh, almost exactly like the fucking beginning of Homeworld. They're going out into the distance to rendezvous with some other ship that was already deployed with some stuff that they need. And then they're going from there. Just like the original Homeworld. Hilarious. Uh, so, ships do carry over this just like they do in Homeworld. So, for example, the, the support ships that we built will have those. Exactly the, the exact number that it, we had to begin with. Uh, the strike vehicles, the attack vehicles that we built, the three that we built, will have those. So on and so forth. And so it shall continue all the way until the end of the game. We It carries over, and the experience, the units can actually gain levels their experience carries over as well, so if those three first guys that we built happen to survive until the very end level, they'll be whatever the hell level is like maximum probably, and they'll be much more badass than they are to begin with. See, it also tells us how much resources we are carrying over, how many command units we are carrying over, which is, um, you know, your typical real-time strategy supply level if this was like starcraft or something it would be you know we must build additional pylons or spot additional overlords kind of thing uh for that that would be the cus the rus resource units of course and then the pc status 60 percent of its systems online so we're missing still quite a bit of the ship total power capability which we haven't even seen yet but uh, power will come into play later on Fuel, 700 miles, I guess, and how much water it can carry for only 21 miles. Hmm. We are in a desert, though, of course, so water is a critical thing. Probably have to fight for water at some point in this game. Alright, folks. That's gonna be it. I know this is a shortish episode, and kind of boring, but beginning episode very first each and every level in this game is going to be its own episode so some will be longer some will be shorter so on and so forth thank you for watching like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and i will see you all next time take it easy have a good day i am looking forward to playing this game and it looks pretty cool so far bye bye folks i'll see you next time